of you, I will add a fun fact. Direwolves are undefeated 18 maps in a row. 19 maps in a row. Wow. Not since... Uh, August? Is that right? Since July 31st. Oh, they won a my map. The last, God. Yeah, July 31st was the last day that they lost a map. That's disgusting. Well, Mandy, I don't think we have to look too far back to see the last time the Knights lost, and I think that that's... <laughs> I think that's a little bit of a that's dog right. comment, but uh, it, is, dog, it is it is what it is. You know, <laughs> I'm out here, I'll put myself on the line. Knights were uh, in line to come into this stage and, and really blow us away. You know, that pickup um, that they ended up getting speakeasy was one that was really, I think, probably the most commented on uh, coming into stage three. Uh, and it just hasn't eventuated. But this team is still just as good as they have ever been. It feels like they're so close, but yet so far away. Yeah, definitely Speakies was a big hype pickup that we said for the Knights. It, it just feels like even though the Knights have all the tools that they need to make things work, maybe one or two things haven't gone their way. It just it just feels like they haven't been able to gel together as a team once it, once they get into the lobby. I did get to speak to the Knights a little earlier in the stage, and I know that sorting out their scrim times and getting that practice in with Speakeasy, especially doing his national service over in Singapore as well, has been quite challenging for them. And so coming into the stage, it, it was just about making that five roster work, and it doesn't seem to have come together. No, but Dev, there's every there, there is every scenario that, you know, it clicks on the final play day. That's, we've seen it like, so much. If it happens, all power to them. That yep. would be amazing. We'd absolutely love it for them. It's funny because Knights just came off uh, their best. Oh, okay, I was going to say their best ever stage of APAC South. But that's certainly not true because last year they did qualify for the Mexico Major but weren't able to go due to COVID restrictions. Uh, but, you know, stage two this year was arguably, well, it was their best of the year. I'll give it that. It was the best of the year. They won OCS, which was like the National League. They've won uh, OCN as well multiple times. And they pick up Speakeasy, one of the best and most renowned players in APAC. And yeah, they just completely drop it all. Uh, what a, yeah. If they can bring it up on the final day and really just turn the story around, that'd be phenomenal. Unfortunately, it's too late, boys. Uh, it's, uh, it's far too late to make the major. The train has left the station, uh, as it, it were. And uh, Die Wolves were on it. That's a damn sure. They were on it nearly two weeks ago. Well, let's talk about a team that really has just gone full circle. Hey, hey, hey. What's going on here? <laughs> what is going on here? Is Surely is? not. We're not about to see the boys are back. Surely not. Is this what not. I think it is? Backstreet's back all right. Am I right, Mandy? Oh, okay. Reeks must not be playing, right? Because, Ooh, okay, I'm probably, I probably shouldn't say the reasonable broadcast. Never mind. Harambe's back in. <laughs> okay. Harambe jam time. But Reeps, yeah, yes. he's not good. So they've lost their entry in this game, actually, right? And that's the old roster back in. Your hard breach is back in instead. Wow, what, a, what an interesting matchup this is going to be. Get some Harambe dances, I really hope. The man I himself swear. looking looking cute as ever and got the Charlotte Major... Um, player pass in the background hanging on that lanyard. It's beautiful. Gonna add a second one to that collection uh, in Yacha Pink as well. I'm not gonna lie, we better be seeing uh, we better be seeing Harambe cams the entire time. That's all I'm saying. Can, yeah. Hey Brendan production, can we just have like a constant pip in yep. the bottom left corner of Harambe, Harambe. at all times? Yep. Just just constant Harambe cams. Even and if it's a gif. Can we get can we get like a loopable gif of him doing the the, the um, dance, the dance it's replays? Yeah, replay up tonight. Is it Isaac, can we yeah, can we get that please as well? Thank just you. the entire time though, the replays yeah. are just the dance. That's it for like a good two minutes. But <laughs> let's, it's kind of hard to not talk. You know, like uh, let's talk seriously for a second though. Die Wolves are entering into what could be their second undefeated stage, Mandy. I mean, this is a feat that no other team in APAC have been able to secure. Yeah, it's really nice to see their resurgence, especially through the turbulence stage two. They went through, it just felt like the roster of five they had in stage two couldn't keep up with the improvement that the rest of APAC South was going in. And by injecting that new life of Reaps, changing up their team dynamic and team structure, it, it seems like that's exactly what they needed in stage three to uh, come into a new form. And that's the direwolves that we see now that's a lot more fast paced, a lot more on the ball and has a lot more firepower as well. Let's hope that uh, Reeves is in the backseat coaching now. We'll have a look at the vetoes to see where we're going to be heading for this one. I think no matter what map we actually head to, this should be an absolute banger. I think like a Classico to kind of finish the broadcast here uh, would really just... Eey. There we go. I knew it was coming. Yeah. We're going to Oregon and 
I mean, I don't really need to say the, the history between these two maps, but I will bring up, uh, sorry, between these two teams, Dev, I'll bring up before you talk about this. This was the map that we saw back in the day, 7th seventh Heaven, sorry, <laughs> come back from a 6-0 against the Knights to beat them on this map. I just wanted to Man, bring that up. That's all. You have one. You have a bloody good memory, you Never do. Forget. I'm impressed that you remember that. The, was that, that was last year, wasn't yes, it? Yes, I think it was stage... For a it was probably stage one, Dev. It was probably... Well, you a host? You've got this Giga Brain hiding behind the, the hosting role, Giga man. Brain. Come on. Uh, All right, yeah, I'll give, I'll give you something to work with. Please. Um, I love the, the rivalry between these teams because despite everything, despite Dialers being first overall in APAC South, first in the major uh, spot, and, uh, and Knights, you know, struggling to make the major and being rough. Knights actually beat Direwolves in uh, in Stage 2. And on this map, Knights beat Tide just uh, just two weeks ago. They've been all right. They did, unfortunately, lose to Fury, but everyone seems to be losing to Fury these days. <laughs> Direwolves, on the flip side, have had a lot of good performances uh, and, in fact, are undefeated on this map the last four times they've played it. Two of those were against the Gladiators as well. So I'd say this is a really strong map for Direwolves. However, it is a map where there's just so many VODs out there of how Direwolves play it. So if Knights have done their homework and they were hoping and planning to go to Oregon, they should have uh, a few tricks up their sleeve. Well, that's probably what we need to see, uh, Mandy. Do we? Who are you backing in? I'll, I'll just let you. Uh, I'll let you dissect that one. Who are you going for here? I backed in Direwolves for my predictions because okay. I think that they just look good at the moment. They're undefeated. That being said, they they are playing without Reaps. I think that does it, that is going to play quite a big difference into this server. Knights, they're composed. They're going to play Oregon the way you need to. And Oregon is one of those maps where things like hard breach and being on the same page and kind of doing things in steps and methods is kind of important. And I think that not having a team flow on your attack will make it a little challenging for the Direwolves. So I would say Knights definitely have an in on this match. It's possible they could take it. Well, it's exciting. It's the last game of the season. And to run you through all the action, it's Gus and Xenox. Sorry, two seconds. D yep. Just start again. Start again. Can, can we run it back? Rob, do you yep. want to... No, well, whatever. We'll just carry on. We'll do it live. Uh, what is essentially our final game, of course, of the season. Doesn't mean a whole lot being up front, guys, of course, for the Direwolves already locked into that first place position. The only thing that the Knights can achieve is basically overtaking Wildcard, getting into fifth, but that doesn't really change much for them either. Yeah, uh, look, it, it is a bit of a nothing game in that sense, but there are still some storylines we can extract. Direwolves as well, of course, going for the impromptu flawless run or the lossless run throughout this stage as well. So we'll be tracking that, seeing if they can get it across the line. Of course, they're already locked in for a first place finish, but yep. it would be a good way to end the stage without uh, dropping a single game. Yeah, it certainly would be. We head to Oregon to close out 2022 for APAC South, of course, though, for uh, some of our respective teams, Diwolves and Fury. They will be continuing on at the Major. And, of course, we're watching on with uh, with great interest, but it all comes to an end here for our final game. And, unfortunately, a bit of a dead rubber, Guz, but we've done pretty well for ourselves for the final play day. I'm not going to lie. We had some banging games. Elevate, of course, for those that missed it, did defeat Game and Gladiators and have practically all but secured their place at the six, six Invitational, 99.2%. And Fury, of course, uh, taking down Tide 8-7 in what was honestly a bit of a surprise match. I probably wasn't expecting it to be that close. But uh, unfortunately for this match, not a whole lot riding on it. Ying, Nook, banned out. I will say, though, of course, for these teams respectively, guys, once you get into the game, once you get into the server, you do generally uh, play uh, as hard as you possibly can and... and yeah, maybe the lead up to it, you're not exactly sitting around itching with anticipation to jump in. But once you're in, you're just playing the game. You want to win. Mm. Yep. Copium? <laughs> hey, you said we're going to take this car seriously, all right? I want a bit of professionalism from you. I know it's the last broadcast of the year, but it's about time you stepped it up. You've had a bit of an attitude issue this year that we need tidying up. Yeah, well... I'm very much looking forward to this enthralling battle between the Knights and the Direwolves. Knights on the defense, Direwolves on the attack. And we're heading to meeting and kitchen to start with. Um, uh, guys, what, what have you got your eyes on for this game? <laughs> Q&A session, is it? Uh, yeah, over, well, over towards kitchen. I mean, we haven't talked about the bands yet, so we can briefly touch on that. Uh, Nook taken out. We, we did see quite a bit of Nook gameplay earlier on in the night uh, in that Oregon matchup. Uh, Elevate in particular using it quite well. Definitely some points of entry where you can use that operator to great effect. So teams won't have to worry about that lurk entry. Uh, the other one that really does stand out is probably that Ying, really explosive on the executes. As for well, my 
Mira not standing as being overly impactful. Most teams don't really want Mira on this map, and I guess Wamai has been uh, experimented here and there anyway. So we head over towards Kitchen, as I said, for the first round. Uh, so already a bit of an off meta pick to start things off, but Knights probably need to experiment to get a win here, I think. Obviously, we've spoken about uh, lovely Devana brought it up. The streak for the Diabolves. It is something to sort of keep in mind. It's hard to envision the Knights breaking that streak, though. Uh, I think in all fairness, it'll probably get broken at the Major. If the Knights were to uh, to stop it now, though, I guess maybe they uh, it's one less thing to worry about for the Diabolves. I don't think they'll be going into the Major caring about that kind of statistic, in all fairness. Knights on the defense first, though, here for Oregon. What have they got in the bag? It's... Kind of been somewhat similar to last year. I was actually kind of just taking a peek back to the uh, the end of 2021, stage three for the Knights. They finished last, guys, in terms of, you know, sort of bringing back maybe some unpleasant memories for the Knights fans. Uh, seven points, dead last, was not a good end to the stage. Uh, and in some ways, stage three, of course, for 2022 is, is shaping up to be largely similar, uh, which is, you know, a little bit disappointing. And I guess, though, it does kind of now fit for a bit of a theme for the Knights. They start well in the, in the year and, and kind of drop off as the year progresses. Minute into the round, not too much has happened. Just some groundwork at the moment from the Direwolves. Decent foothold over towards bedroom, armory. Breach created in towards games as well. So it's not looking too bad for them to try and get some vert control up above the objective. Juicy contesting in kids, Sage as well over towards pit. So still, key players that need to be dealt with here by the Diables. Josh also rendering assistance, so the Knights pretty heavily stacking presence up above here. So it's going to get the opening kill, might just get one more. Never mind, AD with a very decent swing. Juicy getting rid of that drone. Still five more available, but Josh gets the kill onto ED. Taking that position deep inside Attic, falling back over towards pit. Just over a minute remaining. Knights with a slight advantage to keep a barrier being able to block the door off does force out a little bit more utility from Jackie Woot, but responded with another keeper barrier. See if Juicy could hold down this position. Pinned down, but does have a cross with Josh. Keeper barrier offering some good support. Sees the shoulder of Souffle, but it's, he wins the fight. Josh for a trade, but Souffle for two. Leaves us into two versus two. Diffuser not in the hands of the Diables. They'll need to try and collect that for the closing portion of this first round. Speak easy uses the first of his cast canisters. That should delay the remainder of the round. Just stall out this attack a little bit longer. Pika makes his way across, able to collect that diffuser, but Stig's sitting and waiting, has heard that entire play. Pika now will prepare for a plant, but Stig should be able to deny. Not only that, but Speak Easy still has two gas babes as well. Red ping goes out, as he said. Stigs to deny, should be able to do so. A little bit of an awkward wall bang from Stigs, but he got the job done despite making a meal of it over towards Kitchen as he does confirm the round win. So it's the Knights that take the opening round here against the Direwolves. Yeah, not too much really to comment on that particular round. I think the Knights did a great job in uh, denying presence up above. Dives tried to stack it pretty hard and rely on spacing to win out the trades, but didn't quite play out that way. And the cross from Josh over towards Pitt was actually quite strong. So well done there, backing each other up there on the roam. They make the tertiary site work. And we head back down, or we head to rather basement for the first time. A site which should be a little bit more successful for the defense, especially considering some of the operators in play. I pose a question to you, Guz. I'm ready and waiting. And I just want a simple yes or no. I don't want explanations. You sure? Yep. Okay. Okay. You ready? Uh, yes. Do the Direwolves make top two without Reaps? Well, we'll put Harambe in the position. For stage three? To, for stage three. Ten seconds to go. Uh, no. Oh, why? Now I'll, get, now I'll let you explain why. Oh, well, why did you... I could have explained before. <laughs> um, well, I think it's pretty fair to say that Diables did begin to struggle a little bit in Stage 2. That's when they were having these issues, and that's, I think, how they responded with that roster change of Reaps. It worked out really well. He had a great stage. Um, I mean, maybe it's a little bit unfair to say he solo carried the team to first. That's obviously not the case, but mm. 
I think he did buff the team overall. And considering just how close and competitive it was without that extra strength, they probably would have struggled to make top two. Yeah, I, I largely agree. I mean, obviously for the Diables, for those unaware, back in stage two, didn't quite go to plan off the back of what was, you know, arguably a very, very good stage one and in some way probably caught a lot of people off guard. Stiggs over towards security once again, as he was in the round storm prior. Has been forced back a little bit. Of course, Diabol's going completely undefeated in stage one. Seven and zip. They had a 24 round differential. Obviously here for stage three, it is uh, five nothing. 16 round differential, but two of those wins in overtime. So not as clean. Still on the verge of going for a complete streak here once again. Speak easy though. Does get the down on to peak up. Captures him. Minute 45 left. No sign of a trade on the attacking side. Speak is in fact actually going to fortify his position inside a bedroom from a basement defense. Not the safest of places to play, but the swing might net a kill. Nets damage, but no kill in the end. In fact, it's a double for the Direwolves. The other Roma and Josh dealt with. It's a pretty swift response from the attack. And the Knights now will probably need to back themselves on site. Juicy very adequate at those Bruce's deaths. Maybe not quite living up to the reputation of Sapper, but he can hold it generally quite well. I think he's got some company. Well, maybe not the, the best initial gas pipe and has fallen off of that stairs position, especially considering the fact they are down to just three players. They cannot be affording for Juicy to go down defending that position this early on. 40 seconds left in the round, though. And a very last second flank here from Souffle making his way over towards Blue. Attackers recovered the it's been drone, so they know it's clear, at least in the initial entry. Danger though over towards Pillar being held by Sticks. Playable shield, player spotted. Thinks about the aggressive play, but ultimately better of it. The nade lands. A lot of damage, a huge chunk. Blind still. Dazed and confused, but still in a position to make a play. Oh, no. Stage finds one. Sticks with the down. And look at that time dwindling. Only five seconds left in red time. Juicy in the one versus two. You back him in to win these, but Jackie Wu makes a play of his own. I, I love Juicy, I love the Dom, but the way this stage has gone for the Knights, not sure you can back him in a 1v2 at the moment. Maybe months, years gone by, but at the moment, at the present time, hasn't quite been the stage for the Knights in making those kind of plays. And I think that's probably what has been missing and, and, and lacking in, in some instance for the Knights and their ability to clutch round wins potentially from where they maybe would in the past. I think it's time to hand your passport in. Get your citizenship. Oh, I need it. You're, you're betraying the oceanic region. Yeah, but I mean, the oceanic region just kind of sucks. Let's go APAC. Woo! Just, Island number one. I'm just going to pretend that I didn't hear you say that. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't agree with him, chat. Don't. Associate me. With what you don't agree, Thailand number one? Well, well it's actually Taiwan. Technically, it's not. <laughs> Sorry, Die Wolves. The number one team's in the server right now. Yeah. Five seconds to go. We'll move on from those uh, inflammatory comments for round three upstairs. Storms, our favourite site, always seems to be the one where the highest stake rounds take place. This one, perhaps not. Too high stake at the moment, but whoever wins it gets an initial lead on the triple rotation to kick things off and often a good position to find yourself in, specifically if you're on the defense. Proving that I'll have a, a strong footing on this map. Stig's roaming down below. Valkyrie is in play, so no shortage of information in combination with that Echo. Darbles will need to try their hardest in making sure that's dealt with. Aggressive sweep coming out from the Die Walls here. Going to see of Souffle on the Jackal. Jackie Wu as well on the Dokovic. And they've basically cleared all the way over to the bottom white stairs now. Rather early on in the round. And 
imagine there's going to be some sort of presence eventually over towards that big window. That's going to be the, the push, but they want to establish Vert. Obviously down below first. Clear out players like Stiggs. Who obviously has been playing this position, has those pings, and plays off of it very, very wisely. Gets the kill onto Harambe. There's a trade elsewhere. Though. Okay, let's see if Souffle. That one over towards meeting side. Josh playing that backstairs position. Does not get a trade and has a bit of company, at least in Stiggs. They might just be able to play off of each other here and clear out Souffle. Souffle just holding down the line. Stiggs and Josh for the tandem roam. Make it a triple with Sage as well. Offside at the moment, looking to clamber their way back. To get that. So offers Darbles a slight reprieve, an opportunity to set themselves up. They still do have hard breach in play, but stalked oh, wow, down below. There's Yokai, some juicy spot out Jackie Wu. It looks like that was a prepping for a main window jump in, and that's exactly oh, what ED commits to. Juicy, under pressure, they dance around the bunk, and it's juicy to win out. Yeah, that was a, a very ballsy boo from ED and the Dire Wolves, and they're going to cough up the round because of it. No chance that Souffle was going to clutch the 1v4, didn't even have sight control. Basically, every form of entry was already being largely watched. It's a good start from the Knights, by and large. But what's been a, a rough stage for them. You know, they started off their campaign, play day one, play day two, losing to both of the tie teams in Elevate and Fury. They got an overtime win against Wildcard, and, and then a win against Tide, of course, who well, everyone has beaten this stage. And, and from then... They lost basically the, the game I felt at the time they needed to win against the game of Gladiators. Lost that one 7-8. Did go down to the wire. And that was, of course, their, the last game that they did play, Guz, and, and as they did have Playday 6 off as their, their bye week. Now, had they beaten GG in regulation, they actually would have been in a position where they could have still, including right now, been fighting for a top two position had other results gone their way tonight. So, you know, in theory, we look at them at the moment, second last, but the reality is they, they weren't too far off a couple of results being flipped in still being a team competing for a, a position at the major. So, uh, maybe, maybe I've been too harsh on them. Maybe you have. Or maybe I've been harsh take, enough. Gonna, oh. No, no, I don't think you need to go in anymore. Are you going to apologize for your previous statements? Oh, no. You don't like apologizing, do you? No, not really, no. I don't think I've ever heard you say sorry in my entire life. Oh, the Sticks is going for this for the fourth time in a row, by the way. He's done really oh. well from this position. Well, four times, four kills now for Stiggs from security. Every single round, it has been his strength. You get that opening kill. Rotate back down to basement. I tell you what, Knights, Knights are on here. Feeling themselves at the moment. Confidence oozing in a match that really doesn't mean anything for them. No opportunity for extra prize money, but a bit of extra pride if they jump wild card. Their oceanic compatriots in the standings if they do get a win here. The stage that has fallen short of their expectations, but that lends itself into the league just being so competitive. Minute 30 now remains on the clock. ED trying to do some groundwork over towards the lobby, but the hatch has been electrified by Speak Easy. The Kai, the Electro Claws, posing problems. Darbles don't have really anything to counter that unless they send nades down below, but that's going to be quite cumbersome. So we'll see how they adopt their plans from here. Pinky with a big kill onto Stiggs. Shuts down the security man. It's Juicy once again falling off of that freezer stairs position. Alex to just push further back. And does give up some of the, the choke point. Big easy finds a kill to Souffle. And for the most part of this match, the Knights have done a really good job in the, the middle portion of these rounds in getting these kills in a, in a timely manner when it comes to execution time for the Nightwolves. They're just down. They look down and out. Pika over towards that laundry stance position, but he too gets traded. 
They just don't have the numbers. They're losing players too early in these rounds. And ED, this is a little bit too late in the round, makes his way over towards Backstairs. But there's a player, Pillar, to his right and one to his left. They hold the angle. He cannot clear both of them. No chance at all. And the Knights take a 3-1 lead here on Oregon. Nice little cross there to put a bow on the round for the Knights. And a map so far, which has been looking pretty good for them. Had there been some actual stakes on this match, it would have looked very concerning for the Diables. First v sixth. We'd be scratching our heads at this point, thinking that the Diables may lose to the second last team in the league. I mean, they may still, but obviously it doesn't mean anything. Nonetheless, the Knights continue to fight. Paws cold. Don't know if it's attack. We'll get confirmation on that eventually. Looks like meeting and kitchen will be the site and confirmation that yeah it is a tactical from the dire wolves as they look to try and clean up the half there is one more element to all of this guys one that has not been spoken about What's one that? that has gone silent in the background one that many are watching right now are aware of that we're not it's twitch points channel points oh, really yep big big factor right it means a lot okay a sure. huge amount was put on the dire wolves massive Extraordinary. I don't actually know the number. I glanced at it. I think it was something like 6 million to like 900,000 or something. Like, I mean, we're talking like a, a massive discrepancy here. So if the Die Wolves were to lose this game, everyone in Twitch chat's going to be sad about the channel points. I don't know. That's, that's all I came up with. <laughs> I'm glad that you told me that. My no life has been changed forever. I don't think I've, yeah, I don't think I've put uh, any predictions oh, I have. for a long time. I have. I should probably have a look at how many points I actually have. Let's just say I don't have many have. points. <laughs> well, that's not really a shock, is it? Well, straight back into the game, fortunately, from that tactical timeout. Hopefully, for the Die Wolves' sake, they can discuss their issues. Of course, it has been a theme this stage, though, guys. We mention it every single time. Or we, I say, I mention it every single probably time. Probably you. Yeah. Well, they, they like to lose the first couple of rounds, take a tactical timeout. Odin says, you're all bad, and they say, oh, yeah, we know. And then they win like seven in a row. <laughs> the end. Well, it would <laughs> actually be a crazy way to finish the stage if they do exactly that and win this game seven three. <laughs> don't drop a, another round. It actually be it would actually be starting to get a little bit silly at this yeah. point. It, it certainly would be. Wait and see though. Oh, um, our our great friend James Dev Marta Stewart has actually given us the numbers. He's given oh, us no way. the details. Found it in the uh, evidence cabinet. Oh, wow. 75 to 25%. So 8.5 million points on the Die Wolves and 2.8 million for the Knights. I'd say that's kind of, kind of fair. Yeah, that's not too bad. Good, good return if, if the Knights get up. They don't look bad at the moment. Cheeky Forex. Oof. Not too shabby. I don't know what you can spend the points on. Just redeeming uh, the, the minus 640, I think. That's about it. Oh, that is a random Nitro Cell from Stiggs, but I tell you what, it does chunk Harambe down to half health, and Harambe swings and gets the kill. Well, only one play really was able to play off of the intel of that Nitro Cell, and it was Harambe. Four versus four, though. There was a kill back the other way, and this is aggressive. Juicy falls off, but Pika walking into security. <laughs> well, the first round that we don't see Stiggs play the security position, and the Night Wolves just waltz straight in. First round after the tactical coincidence? I think not. Darwell's here to play, but Sage on the vert. Here to play as well. Three versus three, half the round remains. B site relatively exposed, that's in towards Kitchen, of course, but Josh is up above, does have vertical presence. Darwell's shift their attention though over towards Split, look for an entry over towards A, and you can see just how exposed that site is, and I think Darwell's here have made a great call. Hey, he's trying to play off of that ping. Speak easy, loses a bit of his life, so falls back. Throws out the gas bait. Josh, drop down into kitchen. What can he cook up here? Gets through to Harumbo. No dancing for you. The gas bait obscuring the vision. It's still a lot of time. It feels like almost like a 20-second meta rush there at the end, but no, there's still a minute left, guys. They can slow it down here a little bit, the, the Wolves. ED sits and waits, waiting for someone to make a move, but it's himself that moves forward. He dies, but Souffle is left in the one versus three with the Deagle in hand. That's actually Josh, so I'm absolutely tripping. Tactical timeout does not work for the Dire Wolves. Knights claim the round. 
Okay, now well, now I'm convinced I wasn't going to lose. Ooh. Not looking good. No, it's not looking... Hey, look, Vertex is in the game. Who? Let me notice that. Hey, on, on the crane, Vertex. Uh, it, you, you won't know. So 4-1 scoreline. To the Knights, they've cracked the code of the Die Wolves tactical timeout. And maybe the streak coming to an end, it seems. Uh, I think Dev said 19 maps. I mean, I haven't actually counted. To, to me, it seems like, yeah, 19. So since the 31st of July, 19 maps in a row that the Die Wolves have won. Would it be better for them for the streak to end before going to the Major? Mm. You know, suffer a little bit of defeat, do some VOD reviews, get better. Get well, out of the, you know, yeah. stop drinking the bath water. I guess. I mean, if you do want to lose, now's the time. <laughs> Not that I really agree with the philosophy, but right, we could, we could run with it. If they go on to win the major, then good on them. Hopefully they actually get to attend this one, that would be nice. What? It's the biggest APAC debuff. <laughs> That's true. That's the APAC, the APAC jail. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta break your way. You quite literally have to break your way out to get to the major. <laughs> gotta sneak onto the next flight to Sweden. <laughs> uh. Oh no. Oh, Unfor round six. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's it's divulging into this. It is a little bit. Oh, well, Diwolves need to focus up because they're losing the plot a little bit like us at the moment. 2-4 wouldn't be too bad, but the way the Knights are playing at the moment, actually not too shabby at all. Taking this game seriously, we expect no nothing less from this roster. Yeah, but for the Diwolves, they've got really nothing to lose even when they lose this game because they can sit back and say, well, we didn't have reefs. They could also sit back and say, well, it, the game didn't matter to us because not only have they got first place secured, but they're going to the major anyway. And then the old adage, oh, we didn't want to reveal anything. So they have so many excuses that they can throw out there. And not only that, but Oregon is one of their worst maps, technically. It's not usually one of the maps that we see from them in their, in their map. Yeah, but what about, the, what about the channel points? I mean, these poor innocent people in chat have Unfortunately, their they're points just a into the <laughs> Not, just not acceptable. Oh, Jackie Wu though. Well, maybe they might just start to kick into gear. Gets the kill onto Sage. They have already lost to Rambo though, which is their hard breach. The games will stay fortified. They have to find another entry point. And Souffle has made his way over to Big Window. Minute 12 seconds left. Direwolves, the four versus three advantage. Minute now. Speak easy. It's been a relatively quiet stage by his standards. A couple of good games, but he'll be looking to end the stage on a high. Three picks so far in an important position now over towards Kids Dorms. Can help watch the jump in. Also monitor that pit position where Peek is placed right now as well. Could even swing onto ED. So there's a lot on his plate. Juicy as well. Great spot. Ooh, what is that angle? Jackie Wu, the power position on the cross as Josh finds Peek a souffle trade. 3v1 now. Speak easy. Wait, we mentioned he's in an important spot, but they all fall. Who was watching Big Window? Just vaulted in, got a free kill onto Juicy, and then got two more kills after that. I mean, that was a little bit free low from the Die Wolves in the end. Knights should have been watching some of those more critical positions, but it's still a 4 2 half. Four rounds on the defense for the Knights. Not too shabby. You take that on Oregon. I certainly would not be complaining with that first half, and obviously in a position where three rounds away from taking a win against the Die Wolves, they could be the only team this stage to take down DW. I mean, that's basically better than going to the Major, isn't it? Uh, not quite. Damn, rats. I mean, it, I guess it's close. Kind of. It's the only attack though if the Knights can get the job done. They kick things off here with a round win. We'd apply quite a bit of pressure. Some pretty creative and aggressive repix coming through for the attack. Juicy onto the Monty. Repix. 
said juicy, didn't I? Oh, I thought you said repix. <laughs> oh, repix. <laughs> I think I said juicy. You said repix. Attack or repix. Sorry. I was mesmerized. Re repix is a new night attack. So. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe one day. <laughs> if they win the best of three. <laughs> Just gotta get out one more time. Last time, I promise. So, Pika. Up towards small tower. Hanging around that corridor position. Josh not making his way in just yet, though. And Pika will fall back. The laundry supply to start the second half. It's ED, though. That starts us off by getting the opening kill onto Stiggs, who started 4 and 1, is now 5 and 5. Juicy on the Montank will start to make his way over towards Backstairs with the Fuser in hand. It's a double power play position here for the Diables around Pillar. It's not going to be easy for Juicy to push through this. And now being down the Finker as well, not ideal. Yeah, I really need Speak Easy to get to work here with Util Clear. A couple of Rotaros have been sent out. Looks like their effect has been pretty good. Goyo Canisters being ejected. Barbed Wire eradicated. Josh as well is following over the boards. Uh, laundry for a potential back push. Combo that with the E1D on the scan. Could be a decent play, but Jackie Wu is aggressive. Doors barricaded, so that's not going to be ideal. Knights not in the best of positions. They need to get the ball rolling somewhere, find an opening, find a pick, find a bit of ground down below. Juicy with the secondary hard breach, able to pop the hatch inside of meeting. I don't think anyone will want to go for the drop, at least not immediately. Groundwork okay, but translating that to a pick will be tricky. 12 seconds remaining. So much work for the night still to do. Obviously, when you bring in that Montang, you kind of want to play off of that win condition. So they're going to drone Pika, and then the Rotero just sticks to the side of the stairs? Goyo. Oh. That's why there's the well, fire. Well, okay, yeah, that makes a bit more sense. Yeah. It was hard to see, admittedly. I, I, could, I literally see could not see it. I didn't either. <laughs> Cool. Potentially might have messed that one up, trying to clear out Pika from Harry Potter, but yeah. 40 seconds left. It's go time now for the Knights, so you've cleared out that Vulcan canister. Now you've got to clear out that player as well. I think Josh will have to drop eventually, but doesn't have much to drop into. Sage 1v4, isolated on the stairs, the swing strong. It's a trade to close things out. Dar was stamping their authority downstairs. Yeah, a little bit messy there from the Knights. Didn't obviously quite catch the opening kill from ED. But when you bring in that Montang and you can't play off of it as, as much as you would certainly like to, it does just really lessen your win condition when you're especially picking into an operator that you can't necessarily flex all that much if the initial plan goes astray. So the Dire Wolves went out below. Not really too much of a surprise on Laundry Supply. They head up above now. Kids Dorms here in the eighth round. Was the Knights that got off to a fast start in this game. They got out to that 3-1 lead, but the Dire Wolves slowly clawing it back. Is that all you had to say? I've, I've, you're leaving it on a bit of a cliffhanger there. Well, there's not much else to really add to it. I mean, it's your job. You gotta have the cliffhanger to say. is the fact that we're still playing, so you just gotta watch and, and wait and see what's gonna happen here. I mean, I could sit here in silence and watch the game, but that would be a little bit boring. Jackie Wu is trying to make it exciting over to a small tower, but nothing really comes of it. Just an early engagement, an early bit of pressure. Perhaps a drone even taken as well. Stig's looking, I think, to try and open up that side of the map in through small tower. Credit to Stig's probably, in my opinion, the most influential player on the team this year, even. Pretty good. Performed really well. Probably their most consistent player, and even in rough games, seems to do a decent job. I think but that looking at some of his statistics, he's technically not rated the best. It is Sage, but Stig's is the only player on the team that is positive on entry. He's 13-4, mind you. Yeah. So plus nine entries, insane. Really good. He has the highest headshot percentage on the team as well. And he's got the second best KD. 
Unfortunately, his survival rate somewhat low, and same with his cost, and that is where he's losing out to Sage, and that's where the rating difference is, which, you know, point zero. I mean, you don't expect him to survive on entry, but, yeah, the cost is probably a little yeah. bit concerning. But, you know, clearly has had a good stage, and I, I know that, obviously, Juicy has been such a sensational player for this team for so Ooh. long now, but he oh, has we cursed him. been the one that struggled, and, yeah, Stig oh, starts Oh, no. Well, we did, no, 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 That's hang your on, fault. no, hang That's on your a second, fault. no, hang on. He was four and one, and has gone one and five since going four and one. We didn't just start it. It's not like he's ten and one yeah, or something. We, it has already begun. It's over. And this round might be over soon as well. Because it's it's really heating up towards the mid round. Four versus four. Rush getting the kill back onto to Pika. And and now all the flashes and the utils and the smokes go out and gas babe too. Sage straight onto oh. site though, and he's gonna actually catch ED <laughs> off guard. Don't think he was prepared for that. He wants a little bit more. Fortunately, a bit of a one way through the wall there, and it's going to catch him off guard. Harambe falls, so does Jackie Wu. And Souffle in one versus three. Bot White stairs position. I don't see where he's going to be able to win this one from. No, so he doesn't use his nitro. Uh, it doesn't matter. Too late. Plants down. Might hit the shot. No, he won't hit the shot. Well done there by the Knights. Really good pressure to be able to crack open that site. Credit to Sage, credit to Speak. Easy standing out. Be able to get that one across the line. Decent trade early as well from Josh, despite Stig's falling outside. And the die was not really able to capitalize from some of that vert control they had down below. Yeah, and now one round away from guaranteeing at least one point for the Knights here in their final game of the stage. And if they can secure one point, guys, that one handy point, it would put them above one cut. Which would also mean that they are the best team from Australia. In Oceanic region right now. So much on the line. Can't be dropping that. Not only that, but if they do get one more point, just to hype it up even more, it would tie for their worst stage in Apex uh, South that's history. Not, well, that's I, not exactly hype, hype though, is it? Well, no, yeah, seven points is the worst that they've ever put in. Uh, that was stage three last year. So they just. Aren't good at stage the third three. Stage. It's just a bit of a, a curse, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> I, t I said it before. They start the year well and then drop off as the the year progresses. Five seconds. To uh, but yeah, I mean, look, one point would, I guess, make things look a little bit better. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. See if they can get it done. Amaru locked in for the ninth round. Makes sense considering it's upstairs once more. But ED with the spawn peak confirms the kill on to Sage, who's been. Quite dominant for the Knights in this match so far. And not only are they going to lose his frag potential, but those are Teros as well. Sigs for the trade. That looked dangerous, but steps up on the entry as we expect and as the numbers suggest. Yeah. And obviously for the Knights, bringing it back to that four versus four. I mean, the way that this game has sort of progressed, the, the confidence has to be there now that they can actually win this game. Uh, they've been in a... a really good position over the last couple of rounds to maintain this lead. And uh, the one thing I've actually been really impressed with from the Knights has been their ability to, to manage the numbers in the rounds themselves. You know, they if they lose a player early, they're just consistent enough to be able to get that trade elsewhere and bring it back to 4v4, slow it down, good util usage. I think the timing has generally been good as well. Harambe is, is clearly rusty as well. Two and seven for our dancing sensation of APAC South, but yeah, evidently, needs to hit the Kovacs. Personally, I'm more of an Aim Labs enjoyer. I hope none I of those are sponsors. I or... don't know what Kovacs is. I only use Aim Labs. I love Aim Labs. <laughs> Harambe uses Aim Labs. You know, drop Josh. Pulls back now over towards Pit. <laughs> you are so bad. You should lose your job, honestly, at this point. I don't think you deserve a job. Anyway. Juicy's is doing his, and it's breach open in towards games. He has a diffuser tucked under his arm, so he'll be wanting to try and make an entry, try and get some space in towards the site. A player does cross, though. Unfortunately for him, Harambe goes to unnoticed. The drone, though, will probably help in identifying this player. If not, could cause issues, but there's issues elsewhere. Juicy does fall again over towards the breach. Knight's now not in a good spot. Harambe's been allowed to see oh. yeah. Not spotted. Not found. Speakeasy falls. Stiggs, he's been good. We've hyped him up. But to find four here on this cross, he's asking 
the impossible. He could do it. it just starts with the dream. You oh, heard no. the story. <laughs> There's one. Oh, oh, he doesn't get the oh. second. He could have too. Well, three from Harambe over towards Pet. Clearly has been uh, spending some time in the aim labs in the last 30 seconds, guys. And it's showing. It's it's showing. Basement now for round 10. The Knights so desperately wanting that additional point to jump above wild card in the standings, but. Doubles making it difficult for them. Doubles, to their credit, haven't completely rolled over in a match that, again, to be blunt, means absolutely nothing for them. They're first. They're locked in. They're going to the Major. They can't go to SI. So, really not too much else to worry about for them. But wanting that lossless record, we can't quite call it flawless because... They've had some uh, regulation wins, whereas, correct me if I'm wrong, but their actual flawless run was all regulation wins in stage one, so mm. we don't want to discount that. Knights, though, how do they respond? A couple of interesting repicks coming through. Mav in play from Juicy. Trying to counteract that Kai from Souffle. Sledge as well in play, a couple of nades, and perhaps invert controls and vet pressure if Knights want to clear them up. No, I can't make dry noises. Oh, I didn't even know we where to begin. We don't have an audio bug. You don't need to do the noises. You know what? We've not had that for a very long time. I'm glad that got fixed. Thanks for reminding me of that, Cuts. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh never no. mind. Oh. What? oh. <laughs> timing. Hashtag timing. Why'd you have to hashtag it? You're almost 30. I don't see what age has to do That's with that. That's some boober humor from you. Aren't you almost 30 now? Uh, there. not quite. Not quite. Well, I feel 30 though, I do feel I, like. I feel like I've aged a thousand years in this game. <laughs> in this round actually, no, this, just this particular <laughs> round. I don't know what the Knights have done here. Have they done anything? Well, we've just got to be patient. Trust the process. Minute 30. There's speak easy up above, as we mentioned before. Bit of that pressure down to the staircase, but others aren't pressuring it. I'm really looking at Juicy to oh, start chop, getting chop. involved. Get up. Needs to get these hatches opened. There we go. Yeah, this is uh, extremely slow from the Knights. And it's not like there was a whole heap of pressure either from the Diewolves. I mean, we saw at the start of the round watching them as a, a train run down Freezer, but there was not really anything else from the Direwolves. 50 seconds left, and the Knights have no position gain. It, it, to me, this just seems like it'll be a drop, meeting Hatch, maybe a couple of players backstairs. If they can kill the player Pella, get some kills on the drop, maybe they can salvage this round. Speak easy now actually over towards Laundry. Has just kind of gone solo 30 seconds left, guys. Oh, speak easy, pulls the trigger. Doesn't find the kill, reveals his position. Knights with foothold over towards the freezer stairs, but transitioning this in towards sites, going to be challenging, keeping barriers as well, posing problems. Grenade to deal with that. Josh does find the entry though, so it's in favor of the Knights, but Jackie Wu for three. Woo! Jackie Wu goes large. Josh now to find three of his own, but he can't do it. Doubles lock out the round. Jackie Wu. Superstar sensation for the Direwolves. Well, I mean, can we get a can we get an Uru from you? Technically, not really much of a surprise, guys, considering how slow the knights were. Jake, you didn't answer my question. 
Can we get a just like a little? Oh, you were serious. I thought you were yeah, just joking. I was, no, I was dead there's set. absolutely no way. What would I have to do for you, you to do it? Uh. No, I would. I wouldn't ask that of you. Tactical timeout called by the Knights. Carry on, guys. Come on, a bit of professionalism. A lot to break down. A lot to break down from that round because they I mean, were slow. I, they were very yeah, slow. Yeah, there, there is a lot to break down. I think on this occasion I'll leave it up to to you. It yeah, like you've I'm, to I'm trying to. You keep interrupting me. Sorry. Uh, a very slow paced attack from the knight. Failed to clear a lot of the objectives. Couldn't get through their checklist in time. The meeting hatch was left open until under a minute remaining in the round. Uh, not much of a pressure either from Freezer's side. They did have at least one sort of foray over towards Laundry. Uh, that was about it. I mean, in all fairness, it was probably the mo most lackluster round this map from them. By and large, they haven't really been that bad this map, but that round was almost the epitome as to how they've been playing this stage. So that was a little bit disappointing, and otherwise what's been a pretty decent showing from the Knights. 5-5 five -five scoreline against the first place Die Wolves, but that round was, was pretty bad. Pretty bad. Flip it, ship it, put it on a poster. How? Top tier analysis. Like just just the word pretty, like Jake. just the words pretty bad on a poster, that's it? I mean, that's about as deep as you get on these broadcasts, so we'll take it. Round 11 then, we shape up, meeting kitchen. Break point, as Dev has coined the term, must be a tennis fan. Australian Open's coming up soon, if you want to come down. Completely irrelevant to this, of course. Might pack percentage up. Oh, 94%, let's go. Hell yeah. <laughs> focus in, focus in. Of course, the winner of this round will get match point for the Knights. That means jumping up in <gasps> the standings. No way. For the Dire Wolves, it means staying exactly where they are. Wait, where, where do the Knights go? They go above wildcard. <gasps> in like second? Not quite. About fifth. Oh, fifth, right. And they don't but, get any but they'll get some, points or extra They'll get prizes. some money, right? No. Oh, no. <laughs> what happens if they lose? They drop down a last, right? No, they stay where they are. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Dude, come on. <laughs> You're making my life hard. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, we have fun with these dead rubber games, guys. We, we do on. have fun here. You've got we to have, have fun. fun here. Can't take every single match seriously. We had two banging games today. They were really good. It was always going to be difficult to top. Knights oh, with decent control here, actually. Everyone's with big tower. Pretty uncontested at the moment. Just Ooh. be careful of the peak of swing, though. Oh, you just got intel. It just got intel from the Gemini as well, and he still swings and kills. And that's Juicy. the hard reach. That's probably round over, even with man advantage. This is going to still be pretty tough for the Knights. We'll see how they adapt the push because they won't be getting through that wall. Well, they've got 90 seconds to figure it out, and they will have to, yeah, flip the tactics here and figure something out very quickly. Above? Do we go above? I mean, I'm just trying to... It almost... It's like they're communicating as they coordinate. So, yeah, it looks like they will go above. They can drop down. So, if they get pit control here, guys, then... I wonder, do they still play here for meeting? <laughs> 60 seconds. <sighs> He's meeting the play. He's kitchen the play. Well, they need to decide quickly. Because either way, Dai will still have a decent foothold, decent amount of pressure being applied, provided they don't throw away a pick. Information gained, and now it's all about trying to get a physical entry in towards the actual site. Easier said than done. Sage with that Matero just scouts out a little bit. Oh. Does catch ED there, so that's at least good. They, they do have yeah. intel on the player around entrance position. 30 seconds left. ED does go down courtesy of Speak Easy, who did play off of that drone. Does get traded by Souffle, though. Harambe pushing up from pit over towards through Attic now. They know that they've dropped. He's got a good angle. Now he's got that high ground position, too. Established. Shotgun in hand. Still has a Nitrosal. So does Souffle. There's absolutely no way the Knights are going to win from here. Sage with Diffuser into red time. They do get the down, at least. Harambe now to one versus two. They've got to stick the Diffuser, though. They've got to stick the plant. Sage will go for it. 
inside a kitchen. Stigs to watch. Nitrosol goes out. Oh, Harambe! Shoot! Give us a dance, Harambe! I want to see it. He's a bad man. There it is! Oh, it's there! He did it! Can we please get a replay on that prod? There's got to be a replay available for that. Slow it down, frame it. Clip it, ship it. Harambe's back, baby. Reaps is out of a job. He's done. The Reddit detectives are going to be all over this, it. Wait, wait, Reaps is this, out of a just job. This, breaking news, this just in. Reaps dropped for the Major. Harambe's back in. Oh. Let's watch it. Oh, I thought we were going to have the Harambe reaction. Oh. We, we are! Oh! Look at him go. He's like, let's go. Where is it? <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. It was worth the wait. I was never sure if we were going to get another one, Gaz, but we do. What a way to end APAC South 2022 with a Harambe clutch and Harambe dance. 6-5 match point, Direwolves. What a way to get match point. And what a way to potentially close out the year here for both teams. On a slightly lighter note, I do want to drop you as my casting partner for next year and get Twitch chat next to me. Because oh, they were actually imagine? saying they're actually saying Uru in the chat. Oh were they? They got the vibes. Like they passed the check. Good on. Good I wonder on if there's chat. a way where you can have Twitch chat commentate through like some kind of voice. You're going too far. Activation? We, might actually we might actually lose our jobs. Would we lose our jobs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we would. I think we would. It would have to be moderated, though, of course. I mean, like, you just can't <laughs> give them complete freedom. I mean, Sorry. You're, you're not moderated, and we know how that goes, so... No, I've been banned in chat before. <laughs> I meant on cast. Oh, I don't okay. think you've been banned on cast, have oh, you? No, unfortunately. <laughs> so, match point for the Direwolf, 6-5. Uh, and to, of course, keep their streak alive, it would go to 20 maps heading into the Major. Uh, I mean, unless they've got other games that they're going to be playing elsewhere, of course, it will continue there. But it also would mean that they would complete stage one and stage three undefeated, which is quite staggering. We just forget about stage two, though, if we're a direwolf fan. <laughs> stage two didn't happen. No. Fake news. Write it off. Again, the Knights just trickling slowly through this groundwork. Peak is still a concern inside of Trophy posing a threat. Could have liked to be a bit more aggressive or stick on bricks. Coast is clear. Knights need to start getting this hard breach working ASAP. Start pressuring site a little bit more. Josh elsewhere for the pinch. Jackie Boo, top freezer stairs. That's also something to keep our eyes on at the corner of our screen. Could be an engagement. It is. A trade of damage either way. Pretty even. Neither will really want to recontest, but Pika wants to do that stage to find that kill. Surely, speak easy. Harambe. Swings and fights oh Harambe. God. Speak easy. Speak easy. You want to play the, the timing. game? Harambe oh. does go down. Took a little bit of time, and it's even forced out of Gus Moan, which is quite rare. Not going to lie. Hasn't been much moaning recently. No. Four versus three. Jackie Wu just pushes up. Gets the easy kill on to Speak Easy. Three versus three. Oh, Souffle's falling down, so is Jackie Wood. Josh, the Knights, they're on the verge of sending this one to overtime to secure that point that they desperately need to overtake Wildcard in fifth place. There is a Nitra style still, still in hand for Souffle. 30 seconds left. This is the push. This is the play. They get rid of Edie. Three versus one. They surely can't mess this up, and they do not. The Knights send it to overtime. They secure that point. They get seven points for the stage. They go above wildcard. They are the best team in OCE. Well done to the Knights. And I couldn't think of a better game to go the distance. Into overtime we go. A match deserving of all 15 rounds. Would love to see it go. Oh, hang on. The entire way. Hang on. We've just had word. Now, it's not Sprabunny, but it's Dev Marta, and he's just ran the numbers, he says, that if Direwolves win in overtime, there is Wait, a 78% <laughs> chance. How is it 78? That, that it what? will amount to nothing because this game doesn't matter. Oh. 
<laughs> Dev! I actually got debated. You can't say that, Dev. I think he deserves to lose his goal. Well, over that. he didn't say that. There's no proof. I could have just made all of that up. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> six six overtime. Well, Obviously, I don't really know what to talk about now. <laughs> obviously, for the Knights, uh, they do get what they maybe would have somewhat wanted, kind of. Five seconds left before it's going to be a good interview. I'm looking forward to that one. I just know Matic is really eager to jump into it. He's got a lot of questions on his mind. Oh, 100%. Can't wait to extract all those thoughts. Jackie Ruiz had a pretty good game. 10 9, a couple of standout moments. Right, Harambe's almost top fragging. He's not far away. Is he going to force there, his there way back There is actually going to be a Reddit thread after this game. Should saying, Harambe creeps <laughs> out Harambe and Antonio? There will be. If there isn't already. Right. Maybe they're, maybe, maybe they're right. What I if we know. were to get Reddit commentating with Twitch chat commentating? <laughs> we definitely lose our jobs. <laughs> now that's a recipe for disaster right there. <laughs> Rotero's out from Speak Easy. Here's stage stairs now. The back stairs a little bit more exposed. Mixed success with the Monty from Juicy so far. He'll be looking to try and gain a bit more territory this time. Keep in mind, there's still a defender in Harry Potter. Peek is just tucked away. Being sneaky. I think if maybe he can produce something. Also, Speak Easy prepping to try and get blue control and link up with the Monty, but. Pretty split at the moment from the Knights. And it has been quite slow going on a lot of these attacks. Of course, basement generally takes a little while to wind up, but allowing players like Pika to make plays not ideal. He'll fall back after expending that impact. None of these positions for the Dials feel particularly uneasy at the moment, but as I say it, speak easy. We'll drop Souffle. That's a great pick outside blue. So the Knights have it in them though to find victory in the jaws of defeat. Flash goes out back stairs, Sage looking to get pillar control. Speak is the one that shuts down the dancing Harambe. Need falls as well alongside him. Josh though, dropping down in freezer. He's ice cold because he's dead in freezer and the Dials have just closed out the round. What has just transpired? I don't even know, but the Knights, who looked like they were in a decent position, have capitulated. Wasn't expecting the C word in a match like this, but capitulation it is. The Knights, after riding the high of jumping up a position in the standings, get knocked back. Still an opportunity though. If they can push it to a 15th round, they might be able to get the result over the line. Davos now switch over to the attack. We go upstairs, and it's Dorms. It's always Dorms, isn't it, Jake? No more fitting way to potentially end the year, end the stage. That, though, is banking on the Davos being able to win out this attack. A couple of repicks do come through. The Amaru, once again, in play, suggesting some early... Explosive control, or perhaps even an Amaru rush on execute, but without Ying in play, that would oh. probably be a bit of a disaster. I'll tell you what, if the Knights win this, I'll give it the U word. Five What's the U word? Three letters. Oh, that one. No. Okay, is that a bet? Well, let's make it interesting. All right. That's if the Knights win from here, 8-7. I have to win the next two rounds. Chat would love that. I really don't think they care. I think they do. I don't think I've seen them. I, think I don't think I've ever seen them disengaged. I think they just want their channel points. It's a little too close for comfort. There's going to be some broke people if, if the Knights win. They're going to have no points for the Major. Oh, didn't even think about that. Everyone's like, oh, I'm just going to go with it. Die Wolves are like going to win 100% and no points for Major. Sorry. <laughs> Everyone's going to be like minus 640 in chat and going to be like, oh, I can do that. Oh, never mind. I got no points. <laughs> A couple well, of rounds away from that potentially occurring, though. Josh, meanwhile, top of Big Tower with a big responsibility. Oh, here goes 12 8. 
grenade though. Oh, that's, oh, that's oh, big. Oh, oh, my Josh. Yeah, that's perfect. Clean from the Dire Wolves. 5 4 advantage now for the remainder of the round. Well, for all, all intents and purposes, it's been fun, guys. We've, we've had fun this match. Apologies for everyone watching, and I mean that sincerely. Nah, I don't really. I don't really. Is care. this like the part where we reminisce about the year? Because it, it could be over in a minute thirty. Oh, that's right. This is it for because Apex Out twenty twenty two. Yep. In a minute and twenty what seconds, we will be done for this Maybe. year. Maybe. What a journey it's been. The trials, the tribulations, the ups, the downs, everything in between. A bumpy ride at times, but yeah, part I'm of the APAC cry. experience. You're gonna make me cry. I am getting a little bit emotional, I think. I, am, I, I feel something in my throat. <laughs> 45 seconds left. Oh, that's right. I'll take it. I'll do the play by play. I'll do the final play by play. 30 seconds on the clock. Juicy inside of kids with a big job on his plate, but there's nothing he could do. Dials, they're taking it home. Speakeasy in the one versus five, but he's shut down. The Dire Wolves don't lose a single game in Woo! stage Harama three. Dance. The dance comes through, and Dials fully oh, deserved involved. of the title. Now, Jackie Wu, they're all getting involved. Oh my god, it's the ED dance. How does oh, he have breaking this much it energy? down. He has so much energy after such a close game. Well, he has to practice for the major, of course, for the Dire That's where they're heading to Sweden. <laughs> you go to the major. <laughs> Dire win, and they keep their streak alive. 20 maps straight. They are the best team for this stage. Maybe for the year. There is obviously the Elevate debate, Guz, but um, yep. what can be said, undefeated for the second stage this calendar year. What a performance from the Diabols in APAC South. What a year we've had. Oh, we ended on some fun ones uh, with that one. <sighs> Credit to the Knights, sending it to overtime, giving it their best <clears throat> shot. They do get an overtime point, which has put them above wildcard. So at the very least, they can take that home. But the major prize, of course, goes to the Diabols, and that's where they'll be heading, to the major. And for me and you, guys, that's going to be us done for this year. For APAC South, it's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute journey. Uh, I wish I could probably have a different co-caster, but, you know, it is what it is. Maybe next year we'll go to the desk.